Hi everyone, it's Prof. Alanda here, welcoming you to our first lecture uh, in our course on the social impact of technology. So right now we are starting our very first module as well, and I'm so glad you can be here. I hope that you had a great week. Uh, I know that startup uh, week can be a lot of new things coming at you, but uh, I'm here to be reassuring and say that within the next week or so, you are going to be old hats at all of this, and uh, nothing will be all that new. So just hang in there, uh, and uh, maybe even enjoy the ride. So I want to get us started uh, on module one. So for this module, we are going to be spending the next two weeks thinking about how it is that we define and describe the nature of technology. Uh, on the surface, it can seem pretty straightforward what technology might be, but once you start thinking about it a bit more, um, coming up with an adequate definition that everyone agrees with is actually really challenging. So this module is going to walk you through a whole bunch of really interesting ways of thinking about technology, and perhaps by the end of it, uh, you will have a definition that you feel confident uh, in using on, in your own thinking. So that's going to be enough of me on video. What we're going to do now is flip over to the uh, slides where I will talk you through the content for this module. And remember, our modules have two pieces to them. Uh, they have the uh, slides that I'll be narrating for you behind the scenes. Uh, and the other half is the Sutori notebooks, and those are the, uh, the, the space where you get to interact with your new friends in the course and uh, have an opportunity to test and reinfor reinforce what it is that you're learning. Okay, if you have questions in the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact me. I'm always happy to help you. All right. I hope you got some comfortable clothes on and a nice cup of tea. Look, I even have a bag still in, I'm like a wild woman. All right, friends, enjoy the show, module one. Hello again. Here we are starting off module one on defining and describing the nature of technology. So we are going to start off with uh, how to answer the central question of what is technology. But before we get to all that goodness, uh, I want to walk you through what we're going to be doing today, as well as um, talk about the business, uh, which is a bit of housekeeping and a few points that I generally want to address to make sure that you, uh, that we are all on the same page. So for this module, that covers the next two weeks of our time together, you are going to be doing the following three key points. You're going to be answering the question of what is technology with six different replies. You are going to be defining and describing uh, seven key terms that will pop up in our discussion uh, in this module. So you will be able to use those to deepen your understanding of technology. And then finally, we are going to um, respond to three provocative questions. Uh, and remember, uh, we are going to be also using our notebook as well. But first, the business. So I wanted to touch base with you all just to let you know of a few things that uh, I'm hoping that you have found or, and or that I want to let you know about so the first piece is I'm really hoping that you had time to check out the how-to video about how to use a learning module. Uh, in it, I explain sort of the difference between the um, narrated lecture slides that you are doing right now and the notebooks that are using Sutori. So if you haven't watched it, you will find it in our announcements section with the infographic. So you can just click on it 
because I've embedded it in that little infographic there that gives you some ideas about um, how much time per week that you should be engaging in all of these materials in the course, as well as a few other little tidbits. The second thing I do want to touch base with you on, and it is an important point, is that if you are using your smartphone and the Blackboard app as your primary way of taking this course, this online course, I do need to let you know that the app is not complete. So that means that there are going to be things that you will not have access to if you are solely relying on the application on your phone. So when and where it is best for you, I highly encourage you to use a laptop or a desktop to access Blackboard and our course instead. If this is an issue for you and um, a laptop or desktop are not readily available to you, please do give me an email uh, and we'll see if we can come up with some uh, alternative way that you can get the information in the course that you need to be a success. I don't think that our technology should leave anyone behind. So if that's an issue for you, please reach out and there's things that we can do. Finally, uh, this has been an issue only for a few of you. Um, in order to leave comments and take part in some of the Sutori um, components of our course together, you may need and you might be prompted uh, to give what is called a teacher code. Some of you have had no problems and have been able to leave comments um, with no issue and a few others have reached out to me to say that for reasons that are not known to me <laughs> uh, that you needed a teacher code. So here is my teacher code that you are welcome to use anytime in the course and it will become very helpful um, to you when you go to build your own Sutoris for our major project in this course. So it is FZWUG and it's all lowercase letters as you can see. So if you put that in to where it prompts you um, for a teacher code, you will have unlimited access because I am a, uh, a member in good standing with Sutori. So you'll be able to access everything that I can access too. And then finally, the last thing that I want to bring your attention to is the fact that um, the seminar outline instructions and the Sutori seminar presentation instructions are posted for you. So you're welcome to go and take a look at them and even get started thinking about maybe what kind of topics you're interested in. Uh, and you're welcome to reach out to me too um, for some more project ideas or more guidance as you start getting comfortable in this class and start thinking about your major assignments. And in our Sutori notebook, you will also find uh, a little space that I've left. I will flip over to it now. Um, I have left a little space immediately in our notebook so that you too can have a, uh, leave your questions by clicking on this comment box. So that is there for you too. So let's get on with our show, shall we? Let us take an opportunity to participate in a bit of a warm up. So we are going to be using our notebooks for this as well. So what I'd like for us to do is to take a moment to think about three words that we would use to describe technology. Your description in these three words can be anything. It can be um, a person or a group of people, it can be places, uh, and even specific technologies. And when you're ready to contribute, you're going to flip over to our notebook and you are going to go to the likely title, Think Stop Number One, and click on the dialog box that drops down. And you can see my contribution to get you started. 
So how about you take a moment right now to pause this video and go on over and add your three words. Don't worry, if I'm paused, I'm here waiting. I'll see you in a minute. Come back from taking a moment to complete the think stop exercise in the notebook. Chances are you started to see a bit of a pattern if um, you could see other uh, responses. And maybe some of them are interesting and um, similar to yours. So it's a good idea just to maybe read over and see what the other contributions have to offer. What we're going to do now is take a look at six, yes, six replies to the central question we are trying to uh, answer today, uh, which is, what is technology? So let's take a go. So one way to describe and define technology is to say that techno technology is the how and the why we make things. And te technology has its root word in um, kind of a, a combination of um, actions. It can be an art, a craft, a skill. Uh, it also has connotations to fabricating, weaving, or manufacturing. So you can really get a sense of how these words kind of come together to make uh, a meaning for technology that is indicating that it's how we make something. So in this sense, the first um, imprint way of describing technology in this fashion comes to us from uh, Jacob Bigelow in a book called The Elements of Technology, published in 1831 where he describes it as the principles, the processes, the nomenclature uh, uh, of the more conspicuous arts, particularly those which involve the applications of science. And if you have a moment now, you can flip over to our, uh, our notebook, and I've included an example of, or just a way to visualize what, uh, what this definition of technology might look like. So here I have um, linked to uh, the concept video for one of um, the Dutch fashion designers um, concept film of her collection from a few years back. So her name is Iris Van Herpen and you just click on that video whenever you are ready to take a look at this definition in action. But I'm going to bounce back to our task at hand here and also point out that within this reply of technology, technology can also refer to things that are not necessarily material objects. They can be, uh, technology can also refer to concepts and ideas, stories and narratives movements and gestures like what we see in dance, um, mark making and drawing or painting, as well as certain ways of doing things and techniques of doing things. And that could be anything from, you know, um, arranging a group of soldiers in a way that would best um, promote victory in a battle. So these are just sort of examples. And I'd like for you to take a moment now to pop on over to our notebook and maybe give some examples of that you can think of of non-material technological advancements. So I have here, uh, in relation to the John Coltrane album cover, a, a video that looks at why um, the work of Coltrane and why one particular song uh, can be seen as this advancement of, um, of technology, of the technology of music and uh, the conceptualization of music. So you're welcome to take a look at that really great video. And I have started us on uh, sharing 
some non-material descriptions of technology. So you can see mine here. So let's take a moment now. I'm going to pause. And when you're ready, come back into our audio lecture. See you in a minute. Back. So, so far in our replies to the question of what is technology, we have come to the realization that technology is the how and the why we make things. We've now acknowledged that technology can also refer to non-material objects. But if you're anything like me, you're probably still feeling pretty unsatisfied. Like, what is this? What is this thing that we call technology? So another reply that might be helpful for you to think about as you craft your own um, concepts of technology is to view technology as the tools and techniques of making things. So technologies are developed and applied so that we can do things that are not otherwise possible or that we can do them cheaper, faster, and more easily. You know, here you can think of um, the construction of an airplane. And what that does is allow us to fly from one corner of the planet to another. We don't have wings as humans, so it is a real challenge to get around on our own. So in this sense, um, technology then is the tools and techniques that we use to be able to do these impossible tasks like flying from one country to another. So the development of technology is in large measure responsible for the survival and expansion of a species that lacks many of the innate uh, abilities of other animals. And when you think about it, humans are actually grossly ill-equipped to do anything in the world. We don't have claws, we don't have particularly sharp teeth, we don't have wings, we don't have spiky things on a tail that we can use to defend ourselves. But what we do have is our mind and our capacity to um, think of things and make them into a material reality. But without this way of understanding technology and without having tools and techniques to take our ideas and make them real, our species would never been able to transcend uh, our kind of fleshy, ill-equipped bodies. And humans do stand out from other animals because of our ability to gain and transmit knowledge and use this knowledge to develop tools and techniques. Uh, that better our quality of life. So it is a, a really interesting way then to think of technology. Another way that we can think about technology, so the third reply, is to think of technology as a way of organizing humanity. And for technology to be developed and used, the energies and skills of multiple individuals have to be combined and coordinated in a pretty amazing way um, using an organizational structure. So it's this organizational structure that allows the integration of diffuse human, human and material inputs for the attainment of particular tasks. So in thinking about this uh, concept um, architectural photo of the Jewel Changji Airport in Sing uh, this is the airport park, this is not the airport, it's the park in the airport uh, in Singapore. Uh, you get a sense here of how technology can organize humanity. This is an amazing feat of not only architecture, but engineering, um, transportation. So this little tubey thing here is a train that runs from um, different parts of the park to the airport. This fountain, and I have no idea how they do it, to be honest, it's kind of awesome, um, does not fall from uh, the sky down. Apparently it goes upward. I swear, I don't know how. <laughs> it's so awesome. Um, but when you think of 
all of the materials that were needed to create this um, airport park and the, the human power, not only to design, but to manufacture and fabricate and put together. That is an amazing feat of organizational structure. So it's very clear to see in this way how technology is then given um, the, the defining feature of it being a system. So when it is when technology is seen as a combination of skills and devices and organizational structures, that is how we come to think of it as a system. So a system is, you know, when we have the development of all the component parts of a technology, they are systematically interconnected. And by itself, a bit of technology is actually quite useless. It requires all of the component parts, including their concepts and the ideas, to be placed within the system for it to make sense and for it to be brought into reality. So the development of, of all of these elements of a technological system can also be an uneven process. There are um, times where parts of a system advance faster than others. Uh, and that kind of entails the resolution of tensions that are generated when one part of the system changes. A handy example of this that's relevant to our COVID world right now is, you know, as the, the COVID virus is facing an uptick in spread, the types of tests that we currently have and can make available are really lagging behind and causing a tension between what people need in order to keep themselves safe, um, which are tests, as well as, you know, the actual status of the kinds of tests that exist. So these needs and technologies are functioning in this whole system and you can see where the tensions are generated uh, in this way. So in other words, a system doesn't emerge all at once. I think it's important to keep in mind that, you know, it just doesn't happen. Um, there's always going to be tensions that create the impetus to develop technologies faster and in different ways. So in addition to the changes in tools and techniques and organizational structures, many sociological, psychological, economic, and political adjustments may be required to continue to support the system. So this is a really richly complex way of thinking about technology. A really ready example that can help us understand this um, systems approach to, to technologies is to think about writing technologies like the pen. So when you consider that, you know, the, the pen did not emerge ready-made <laughs> uh, in, in any way other than at a particular point in time and in history. So a way to understand this is to recognize that for most of human history, having a quill, so you would uh, pluck a feather from a feathered friend like a duck, uh, and use a knife to sharpen the end of the quill. And you can dip that quill in some ink or some dyed matter and use that to write on uh, your choice of parchment or papers. Like I mentioned, that was the way to write things down for a good chunk of human history. But it wasn't until much later into the 18th and 19th centuries that we started to see the, the quill be revolutionized as this lovely lady is um, showing us here that instead of having to pluck the feathers and deal with fluffy feathers, 
um, a piece of kind of tubing was made and a nib put on the end that could be dipped in some ink and that be used as a writing utensil. It wasn't until the 20th century that we started to see the evolution of a ballpoint or ball-tipped pen. The reason is because that was the only period in time in which those very particular pieces of technology had um, been able to be manufactured in, in such a way. So this is a unique artifact to a period of time. And we're still evolving writing technology. We now have the ability to create what's called smart paper or smart pens where our actions and gestures made by our hand um, are parlayed to a device that captures the kinds of marks that we're making as if we were writing on a page. So this again right now is the only period in time in which this invention could have ever been made because it's the only period in time in which all of its components and all of the systems around it allow it to be shared and propagated. So that's pretty darn incredible, isn't it? So we're working our way through some more replies. Uh, a fourth reply, and I think it's a very crafty one, is understanding that technology is a system that's created by humans that uses knowledge and organization to produce objects and techniques for the attainment of certain specific goals. Now, that seems like a great definition that brings together all of the last ones that we've covered, right? But there's some very particular issues, uh, one could say, that this definition does not adequately address. And I've kind of highlighted here what that is. So it's not problematic to say that technology is a system that's created by humans. Yes, it is. Um, that uses knowledge and organization. It certainly does. But the real problematic part is where it says to produce objects and techniques for the attainment of certain specific goals. Here we can problematize that by asking two really simple questions. Whose goals and whose needs are being filled by this technology? And it might seem a bit strange to ask these things, but here's an example of the implications of asking these questions. So what you're looking here is at a very famous um, painting uh, done in 1847 by Charles Lees, and it's called The Golfers. And the scene depicts a bunch of uh, pretty wealthy looking people playing golf. So here they are, uh, here's their caddies with all of their poor golf clubs. Um, and in the, the background, you can kind of see the, uh, the, the kind of smog over top of the city compared to the nice, clean countryside. But when you delve into this portrait a little further and think a little further, you can sort of get some indication that by their clothes, these people uh, aren't working in the stinky, smelly city center. Uh, they are not even um, agricultural workers because they are way too clean and nicely dressed. So these are very wealthy people having a leisurely time on their golf course. Well, what does that have to tell us about technology and about that specific definition that we were just addressing? Well, it tells us that the development of golfing and all of the tools to be golfing, like the balls and the and the uh, the clubs, really serve the specific interests and needs of a very particular type of person, i.e., a wealthy person. So, if we are to think that technology is the system that's created 
um, and it's there to achieve specific goals, we do have to keep in mind of the inherent inequalities or the, or the very specific interests that these tools play. And points like this will become very important points to address when we learn a little bit more in next module of how to assess and evaluate the social impact of technologies. So that's a ready example of an issue there. Another reply to the question of what is technology is technology is rational. It is seen as a rationality. And the development of technology stimulates a belief that progress is a natural part of human life. And if we look at the kind of arc of human history and human evolution, we can certainly be credited for thinking that way, that, you know, we used to use pens that were made of poor ducky feathers, but now we use some very sophisticated pieces of technology to be able to capture our ideas. Um, and this can be seen as a progression. And to that end, the progress of technology is the product of a set of cultural values and practices that's characterized by rationality. This is how um, technology is considered rational. It's because of its ability to progress. So in with cultural values and practices that value rationality, there will be things like problem solving methods that rely on um, systematic objective and empirically based observations about the world. Now this is to say that this isn't to say sorry that this is um, a Western idea. Rather, all cultures have technology. All cultures use problem-solving methods that rely on objective ways and systematic ways of um, demonstrating that something works or an, and that something works better than something else. So I don't want to leave you with the suggestion that this is uh, a Western construct. It really isn't at its root. So part of the belief that technology is rational it relies on the belief that solutions to problems are possible and that constant changes are needed in order to recognize them. And societies that value rationality um, as a dynamic and essential part of their cultural values tend to be really quite optimistic and there is exhibited a confidence necessary to alter existing ways of doing things in order to gain particular benefits. So thinking here to Western industrial nations, um, just because they're, they're a bit more ready of an example, but again, this does not have any, um, any particular emphasis on them. The optimism that um, new technologies surrounding energy cultivation and production uh, are, exhibits this idea that progress will carry on our ideas into the future and things will get better and better. Finally, the last reply to the question of uh, what is technology now this one's a little bit out there, I'm going to warn you. Uh, technology can be understood as a metaphysical framework for interpreting pretty much everything uh, in the universe. And you're going to have to bear with me here uh, a little bit because it is a bit of a conceptual stretch. But when you look historically and even contemporarily, um, at the kinds of technologies that dominated any group of people in any period of time, you'll come to see that the technologies tend to reflect their thoughts and feelings about that community's sense of the world. So for example, in 18th century Europe, uh, the idea of the feedback principle um, was a really popular way to think about um, the circulation system in the human body, the nerve system in the human body, 
um, the ways in which nature responded to human interactions was based off of this notion of the feedback principle. And as an example of how it becomes a, a, technolo a technological understanding that becomes a metaphor, we also see during that time that the feedback principle came to shape an understanding of the growing economic systems in Europe at the time. And, you know, this went so far as instead of having a governance model from centralized authority um, as an economy is best organized through the operation of self-regulating market, so most of our modern understandings of economics comes from this 18th century uh, fascination with the principle of feedback. So there are a few other examples that I list here. I won't go through them now because I've been talking for 33 minutes. <laughs> I tend to get a bit bored of my own voice. But I do want to point out that in our uh notebook, there is a section for you to learn a little bit more about how the, how technology operates as a metaphor for interpreting reality. And I've included two further examples. So one is uh, the Victorian microscope uh, and the ways in which people in the Victorian era sort of uh, understood what they were seeing often for the first time. Uh, in their microscope, how they sort of created parallels to, to worlds of fancy and literature. Um, but also in the 20th and 21st century, um, a notion and a metaphor that the human mind being like a computer. So this piece is uh, an argument as why your brain is not a computer. So I think they are both really interesting pieces that I hope you enjoy. So for now, let's leave it there. Take a break. And when you're feeling ready, you can come and join me again in the second part of the video lectures where we'll talk about some of the problems with defining technology. Okay, I hope to see you soon. Bye.